It seems that in the context of mecha anime main characters, the shy and quiet teenager is the stereotype often attributed. It's not because they are so easy to make fun of, but probably because the guy is so human and so prone to making mistakes, or because the fans can relate to the kid. One of these unsung heroes is Cage Midwell, a 17-year-old kid who makes his rounds on the spaceship Bonaparte III, and he's your typical run-of-the-mill 22nd century deckhand. Once his ship is attacked by a powerful orbital frame, however, his life takes a dramatic turn, for better or worse. This is the premise of Zone of the Enders, The Fist of Mars, part of the Hideo Kojima-headed development that has taken the classic mecha anime series and turned it into a widely popular gaming franchise. If you value action over story, you might not even want to look in this game's direction. The Fist of Mars is highly story-oriented, following the trials and tribulations of Cage Midwell and his close friend Ares and Dua, as their story unfolds through 26 chapters of turn-based tactical gameplay. Just like in any other Zone of the Enders game, you'll control orbital frames against your foes, but you'll now be blasting and swinging laser blades on a tactical grid. Anyone who has played the Ben Presto released Super Robot Tyson, or any Super Robot Wars game for that matter, are probably drawing comparisons to it right now, and you'd be entirely justified. Each orbital frame you control has strengths and weaknesses, and as the game progresses, they both come into focus more and more. With the help of Born in Space operative Dex and Guys, your team will get bigger and stronger as you fight off the forces of Mars who want nothing more than to enslave you and the BIS. What intrigues me the most about each battle is what happens when you select to attack an enemy, or vice versa. Within a certain amount of time, you must target the enemy or dodge their attacks by moving the cursor on your screen away from the mecha as long as you can. It's an interesting way of going about a battle rather than just selecting the action and putting it into effect. Even if you want this game because of the turn-based gameplay, you'd be missing out if you didn't focus on the story which is beautifully written and thought out. It's evident that such a plotline is critical to the advancement of the game, and it's almost like reading a chapter of a manga before tackling the quality gameplay. Even if you think Cage is a whiny bitch. I find the hack and slash Zone of the Enders for the PS2 more fun to play than the GBA The Fist of Mars, however, and I definitely want to make the argument that if I want more story to what's going on, I'll settle for watching the show. Dialogue can sometimes drag on a little too long, and I'll skip ahead if I want to get to the battlefield. In conclusion, if you love Zone of the Enders as much as the next guy, I would recommend The Fist of Mars. To those who want an introduction to the series, start watching the show first or get a good dose of hack and slash for the PS2 before pulling the trigger on this one. Mm -hmm.